Welcome to this combined Sir James D Tech and Sir James D DJ video. Today I will be making the introduction to my new P67 socket 1155 setup. You may be wondering why I got out of the X58 build I was in. Because I had the i7-980X Golf Talent and so it was a pretty kicking setup. But what ended up happening is my motherboard fried the 24 pin. There's two pins in there and it just melted the plastic right in there and the motherboard manufacturer denied my RMA. So with the help of my friend John Green at No Free Tech Support, I decided to move to P67 since Sandy Bridge is right around the corner. And I thought, hey, as long as I'm going to P67, I might as well get the best, which is at present the Asus Maximus 4 Extreme. Now the P67 is a socket 1155, which don't get confused with the P55, which had socket 1156. I know these things get confusing. Yeah, the Asus Maximus 4 Extreme. Sure to be the flagship motherboard for this socket. Probably for quite a while. And then along with Maximus, I got the Intel i7-2600K. Now because this is a K processor, this does have an unlocked multiplier, which goes up to 57. However, the overclocking is drastically different than any of us are used to. The 2600K honestly wasn't all that much more from the 2600. So it was just plain and simple and easy choice for me to get this one. And I'd like to send a shout out to my boy Flick from the SirJamesD.com forums who gave me an early update as to when this was going to be available on Newegg. And don't worry, I'm going to do a proper unboxing of the motherboard and also my processor coming up in videos. Now to cool the CPU, I decided to go with the Corsair H70. Now you all may remember that I had the Prolimitech Super Mega, which is an absolutely beastly and excellent heatsink. However, the spacing on this motherboard to go along with the RAM heatsinks I have which I'll show you the modules in a minute. There's no way I could have done push-pull. I mean, that push fan, it, it just wouldn't have worked. It would not have fit. And so I'm thinking, you know, gosh, I can't have a heatsink on there that's only half performing. So I just thought, you know, I've heard good things about the H70 and it'll clean up the look of my setup a little bit. So I'm gonna give this a turn. Now I also upgraded my solid state drives. You remember before I had the OCZ 30 gigabyte Vertex Turbos, I had three of them. I decided that since there's not a heck of a lot of selection out there for SATA 3 solid state drives yet, I'll just go with the Sandforce controller, which are in the two OCZ Vertex 2 solid state drives. Now you can see I've still got the GTX 580s, however I made the jump over to ASUS. These are the overclock edition, and no I'm not sponsored by them yet, so that's not the reasoning. And then the memory. I got 8 gigabytes worth of Corsair Dominator GT 2000. Now the Dominator GT may be surprising to some of you because it's fairly well documented my belief on Dominators and how I think they're vastly overrated and overpriced. However, I got these on eBay for an absolute steal. Yeah, I got quite a shock when the memory showed up and it came in this packaging. Well, let me tell you, I was absolutely burning because like I said I bought it off eBay and I was just thinking god that's absolutely the last thing I need is somebody to swindle me on memory and having to delay this build because of it me being well me I ordered this airflow pro which is an LED indicator and a RAM diagnostic all right enough yakking let's get building all right, you can see this is where my setup is at right now believe it or not I kind of dusted it off and cleaned everything up. I haven't been spending much time in this room at all since this thing's been down. And it kind of looked like a case from Fallout 3 the way cobwebs were starting to go all over it. And I almost feel like I should have left it the way it was. Would have made for a more striking contrast for the end of the build. But yeah, I needed to stay with the full tower case because the Maximus 4 Extreme is an extended ATX motherboard. And at present, there's really no full tower cases out there that I like better than this. I tried the half X, didn't really like it. 
Besides, it'll go very nicely with the Corsair H70. Okay, here we are making progress. You can see I've got the board in. I've got my sound card connected. The two GTX 580s are in. And in case some of you are wondering why I have them down in those slots, I'll go over this more in the Maximus 4 review. But basically, in order to engage the NF200, you've got to have that top slot occupied by something. So that's an X8 now. And then slots 2 and 4 then become 1616. You can see I have yet to put the processor in. That's usually pretty much the last thing I do. I never want to take a chance of something happening or something dropping out it or getting scratched, damaged. Yeah, Republic of Gamers. I can't wait for this unboxing and review, honestly. There's so many features of this board, it's unbelievable. Including a BIOS in which you actually get to use your mouse. Wow, it's not like that's 10 years late. All right, quick update. I just had to show this to you. This came with the Vertex 2 solid state drives. Now that Z on there, I don't know if that represents the Z drives, which OCZ manufactures. Those are PCI Express based solid state drives. But I did want to show you something real quick. That thankfully, for the love of Pete, this board does come with four pin Molex for extra power for the PCI lanes. So now with this board designed correctly, I most likely won't have another 24 pin blow out on me and almost destroy my setup. Got the power supply in, which Antec was nice enough to fix for me. No troubles there at all. All right. Moment of truth time. Uh, I hope it was designed to do that. Ah, there we go. Is that a beautiful sound or what? Thanks so much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I'd love it if you became a subscriber to Sir James D. Tech and also a Sir James D. DJ, and also become a member of the forums at SirJamesD.com. As you can see, this is just a tip of exciting things coming up, so you don't want to be absent from seeing it happening. Alright, I'll give you a quick sneak peek of the Maximus 4 Extreme EFI BIOS, which as I said earlier, you can actually use your mouse in. It's not just a monotonous blue screen either. Now that the beast is unleashed, I will see you soon. It's great to be back. Talk later.